Starting off at number 10 now, we have The Being. We're starting off with a great one here. This Reddit user said, a lot of this story takes place a couple of years ago. However, the final part happened just a couple of nights ago, so I figured I should post it. This all sort of started two years ago. I was walking my puppy down to the beach after dinner. She splashed around in the water a bit. Not very important to this story. What is important is when I was walking her back to my house. There was a man with the biggest smile on his face, just walking down the sidewalk with over-exaggerated arm movements. As we passed, he politely said good evening to me. A couple of months later, I was in the car with my mom and sister. That same man was walking down the sidewalk, and my sister pointed out his odd arm motion. Almost immediately, my mom told her to not make fun of him, and that is just something he does. She then quickly said she's known him for a while. A couple of weeks ago, I was out jogging at night. Since it was late, I was very paranoid when I was out, so I was looking all around the whole time. For a couple of minutes, I was just staring ahead. There was no way I could have missed anything. Who else showed showed up almost out of thin air, that same exact man. There was something noticeably different. Everything about him had reversed. The once overjoyed man had an almost cartoonishly huge frown and was walking with the biggest slump. He passed by me without saying a single thing, which seemed odd just for politeness sake. I got home and immediately told both of my parents about the encounter. While attempting to explain the whole thing to my parents, my mom looked incredibly confused. She told me she had no idea who the man was, even after I reminded her about the car ride where he showed up. Finally, two days ago, I saw the man again. He was on the other side of the street from me. There was absolutely nowhere for him to go. But when I turned around, he was nowhere to be seen. This whole thing has me incredibly freaked out. I haven't even been jogging since the incident. I can't even explain the feeling I had the last two times I saw him. I just know I've never felt more disturbed in my life, and I have no idea why. Both times seeing the man at night, I felt shaken to my very core. If anyone has any theories, I would love to hear them. Next up at number 9 now, we have the husband glitch. They say that people and places can phase between parallel worlds, but can text messages. This story comes from Reddit user Aunt Masto, who said, I'm a newlywed. We've been married less than a month when I woke up at 5.30am next to my husband's sleeping form and saw a notification on my phone. It was a text from him, Sam, with a love heart, sent at midnight. Sam said, who is this? Now, I'm pretty sure that Sam was stretched out next to me, snoring away at midnight. I'm a light sleeper, and it's like Likely I would have woken if he hadn't got out of bed or turned on his phone. Still, stranger things have happened. I figured he was playing a weird joke on me or something. I decided to play along, so I wrote back, who is this? Seconds later, Sam replied, I asked you first. I could feel Sam pressed against my right side, warm and breathing regularly. I looked at his nightstand and confirmed his phone was still there, dark and silent. I said, seriously, who is this? Why are you coming up on my phone under one of my contacts' names? Sam said, what name am I under? I said, obviously there's some cross wires here somewhere. We don't know each other. Sam said, are you in? And it was the name of the town that we both lived in. I said, yes, are you? He said, yes. I said, okay, there you go. Wires are crossed. It's weird, but I'm sure it happens. He said, we must live near each other. What street are you on? I tried to change the subject because I definitely did not want to tell this person the street that I was on. I asked him, do I come up on your phone under someone else's name? Sam said, I was looking through my contacts and I saw Saw one that I didn't remember created under the name Wi-Fi with a heart like this next to it. I was just curious who this was. I live on Violet Street, by the way. I went cold. My husband's nickname for me is Wi-Fi, but pronounced Wi-Fi. It's a silly inside joke. No one knows about it but us, or so I had thought. And we do live on Violet Street, and we both make little love hearts next to each other's names. And something about this person's writing style was so familiar. I confirmed that my husband was still still slumbering next to me. His phone was still on the nightstand. Someone was messing with me. I turned my phone off, got up, and got ready for work. Later that morning, I showed the text to Sam, who was baffled. His phone had no messages on it. He texted me to test things out, and his message, hi, popped up right underneath the last message the other Sam had sent to me. That one weirds me out. Give me your theories, guys, please. Moving on to number eight now, we have the closet. Have you guys ever seen someone that looks a lot like you? You probably think nothing of it, but sometimes it makes people really question their own reality. Reddit user, please probe me, nice name, said, I used to work at a dog rescue in the Midwest before moving home to the East Coast. It was a small rescue, about 10 employees max, and we were all tightly knit. Nobody there resembled me. I am exceptionally short and have different hair than anyone there. So it was 
wasn't easy to mistake someone else for me or vice versa. The place was also haunted. We all heard a female voice yelling at us or singing near us when we were completely alone. Almost everyone saw apparitions or reflections when nobody was there. So this place was already full of some weird energy to begin with. Then it got weirder. During my last couple of months, co-workers started sending me odd texts. They would text me on my days off asking me why I was there and where I had just disappeared to. I would always reply that I wasn't there. While I was there, occasionally someone would jump at the sight of me and say something like, what the hell? You were just outside. I saw you through the window. Or I just saw you in the storage room. How did you get here so fast? They couldn't understand how I'd gotten from point A to point B impossibly fast. Every time I would be baffled and explained that I wasn't where they thought I was before. A good example that I remember was this one. I was in the backyard. The only door in from there goes through the main adoption room, then exits on the other end about 50 feet away into a hallway containing a kitchen and some private meeting rooms. I walked in from outside and saw my co-worker coming into the room from the hallway. She looked at me and gasped. Then she opened the door behind her to the hallway. She explained that she had just seen me in the kitchen doing dishes, but when she opened the door, which lay about six feet beyond the kitchen door, there I was coming in from the outside. It was actually impossible. This is where we started to understand that something very strange was going on. We all sat around and talked about it, and it turned out almost everyone was seeing a phantom version of me. Every time they saw it, it was turned around and didn't interact with them. It would get into some strange places too. For example, someone watched me go into the closet holding the water tank and followed me, asking me some questions about work matters. As soon as they turned into the closet, I was gone. Now, I personally hadn't walked into that closet at all around that time, let alone on that day. My best guess is that I was in the middle of making a major life decision about either staying in this city at this job and taking a promotion or coming back to the East Coast. The decision was extremely stressful for me to make as I really loved that job. I'm surmising that my energy literally just split somehow and that a parallel version of me was hanging around there after I endured so much angst over staying or leaving. If I want to get super weird about it, I could say that maybe in another reality, I decided to stay there. And maybe those two timelines were intersecting and glitching onto one another. They continued to see me after I moved home thousands of miles away. Moving on to number seven now, we have the wise dog. They say that animals have a sixth sense. Perhaps that extends to parallel universes. Reddit user GreatLarryBird33 said, I have a 10 month old son, great kid, and is just starting to crawl and move around on his own. Tonight, before I put him to bed, he passed out on this big pillow in our living room after he'd had a bottle. I picked him up and put him in his crib in his room down the hall, then let the dog out and sat down to watch some TV before I brushed my teeth and went to bed. My dog walked down the hall to my bedroom to go to bed, and about an hour later, I get up to turn the TV off and notice my son asleep facing away from me on the same pillow I picked him up from an hour before. I'm now thinking that given his skill level at walking and crawling, there is no way he was getting out of his crib, down the hall, and back there again. I chalked it up to me not paying attention. So I walked over, picked him up, slung him over my left shoulder, went over to the front window, shut that, and went back down the hall to go put him in bed. I opened the door to his room, turned the corner, and with the dim light from the nightlight, I noticed that he is now in his crib, rolled towards me, asleep. It took me about a second to put together what was happening. How did I have him on my shoulder and he was in bed at the same time? What felt like a millisecond later, I hear my dog kind of bark and whimper in a confused tone right behind me. Then I look to my left, bring my arm down and see that his stuffed animal monkey is in my arm. Now, I am as sure as anything in my life that I picked up my son and that I would have known the difference between a 25 pound kid and a one pound stuffed animal. Now I've checked the carbon monoxide detectors, the windows were open, and I've only had a single beer tonight. Weirdest thing though is my big old black lab will not leave my son's room. I am really, really baffled. Wow, me too, me too. Please give me your theories, guys. Next up at number six now, we have the vanishing road. Have you ever seen something disappear? I don't mean actually in front of your eyes. I mean, it was there one day, and the next, it was just gone. Was that your poor memory? Maybe your eyes playing tricks on you? Reddit user Padjo95 has this story that might make you think it's something else. They said, I swear up and down that this actually happened. About four years ago, I lived in this fairly small fly speck of a town. At the time, I had lived there for about 12 years, so I knew my way around. 
Our house was about a mile and a half away from the nearest neighborhood. Our mom intentionally picked that house due to the lack of neighbors. It was tucked away on a back road with the woods surrounding it. Every now and again, I like to take walks with my little brother, who at the time was about 13. We decided to do just that. We headed up the road and decided to try and find a new path or a new clearing that we hadn't discovered yet. And we noticed something a little shocking. Just off the road that led almost directly to the neighborhood, there was a brand new paved road. Every road in that part of town was a gravel road, so seeing an out of place paved road was pretty unusual. We stared at it for a while and came to the conclusion that it must have been made within the last few days due to the modern but slow growth of the town. However, we had no explanation for how they did it so fast. We decided to explore it a bit. I remember as soon as we set foot on the road, the air became noticeably colder by at least 5 degrees. The road itself was a black pavement, but no dividing lines. It was surrounded by some thick red trees that resembled redwoods, but they were too short and non-native to our state in southern Arkansas. We walked on the road for about 3 miles until we decided to head back due to it getting dark. When we got off the road, we felt the temperature go back up. My brother and I agreed to explore it the next day. At roughly noon the following day, we set back out to explore this place, only to discover that the entire road was now missing. When I say missing, I mean the trees that were cleared to make it had apparently grown back with no sign of the redwood like trees. We even began to explore the woods once more, but found no sign that it ever existed. When we asked our parents about it, they said they knew nothing about any new road work being done near us. Has anyone ever experienced anything like this? Moving on to number five now, we have the play. There are theories that with every moment that passes in time, an infinite amount of alternate realities are born. Sometimes people claim to see them, like Reddit user Airmail Dolphin, who said, I had an experience when I was a teenager that has led me to believe that I am now living in an alternate timeline. When I was a teenager, I would occasionally get 30 second or so glimpses into the future in dreams. Unfortunately, these glimpses were always of no real use, since there would be random glimpses into my ordinary life that would come true over the course of about a week. Well, one time I had a glimpse that I was cast in a play in high school, and during the course of a rehearsal, I knocked over something and everyone there laughed at me. Long story short, I was cast in a play, and I could see the same situation starting to unfold, so I took the object in question and moved it as far away from myself as I could. I didn't end up knocking it over, and life continued on. But now I still have the memory of how things could have unfolded. Next up at number 4 now, we have the Parallel Door. This one comes from Reddit user Zinister11. It's a little hard to follow, but it certainly creeped me out. Don't worry, I'll read slowly. Zinister said, My girlfriend Heather and her son Tyler, and Tyler's two year old son live with us. The two year old boy has a bedroom at the back of our bedroom through a door. Tyler went to the store and had his girlfriend watching over the boy. Heather and I were in our bedroom when all of a sudden we heard the boy crying and making a racket. So Heather got up and opened the door, looked in it and said, damn it, she locked the boy in his room. He had another doorway to the hall. I looked in and saw the boy turning the doorknob trying to open it. She asked me to go and unlock it. So of course I went around and down the hall, got to the end of the hall and the door he was just trying to open wasn't there, just the door frame. He was laying on his bed peacefully. When we moved here, it didn't have a door. I was confused as hell, but walked back and told Heather it didn't have a door. It didn't make any sense, like a door was definitely there. I got the guts to ask Heather if she remembered anything about that door. She turned with wide eyes and said, yes, I do. He was pawing at the door. I remember it. It happened. I'll never forget. It must be our next timeline cross over to ours, so essentially the door that the child was locked behind suddenly disappeared. What is going on there? Next up number 3 now, we have The Senses. This is a really weird one from Jimmy Soul on Reddit. It sparked a huge debate about what the explanation for this was. Let's just hear it first before we try and explain it ourselves. They said, while at a festival, a man walked up to me and stared me dead in the eyes. His irises were so dark that it was impossible for me to distinguish his pupils. He spoke and said, what was that? Do you see it? I suddenly saw a bright array of colors surrounding him, much like what I'd call an aura. Can you hear it? He said. The aura faded away, and I heard a bunch of high pitched harmonic hums resembling an ensemble of singing bowls. Then he said, Perhaps you can smell it. The sound was no longer present, but I smelled an indescribable fragrance. This might be a stretch, but I thought it smelled like lavender. Then he said, Or can you taste it? I experienced a taste in my mouth similar to that of a cough drop. My mind was blown. From what I experienced, 
experience, this man was playing with my senses, simply by looking at me and speaking. It was as if he had a special consciousness. I asked his name and he said, I have no name. He walked away and I never saw him again. Wow, okay guys, so that one was pretty weird. Some people laughed at this story and said that it was just dehydration or maybe he was sleep deprived or that the mystery man had hypnotized him. Others are convinced that this was a being from a parallel universe who was perhaps just as surprised that he could be seen as the storyteller was to see him. Moving on to number two now, we have Gavin. This is one that I could have put in a time traveling video or a parallel universe video. Just see what you guys make of it. Reddit user Theus Eus said, now this happened when I was around 16 years old. I was a fairly normal kid, spent a bit too much time on the computer though, so I made a lot of friends with both nerdy kids and popular kids. It all starts when I met this nerdy kid who I'll call Gavin for the sake of the story. Gavin and I started becoming decent friends because of our interest in WoW. Gavin was a really socially awkward guy in real life, although he's a cool dude to talk to online. He's also a genius who has an IQ of around 180 as far as I remember. I did the same test that he did in school and got 103, so it's the real deal. Gavin and I came to each other's houses a lot after we became good friends. We would chill, play WoW, watch videos on YouTube, play chess, that sort of thing. He was a pretty cool guy and soon enough he was one of my best friends. One day I decided to go over to his house uninvited. It might have been the wrong move but I was a teenager at the time and I just thought we were really good friends so it was cool. I knocked on his door and this older looking guy opened. He was around 40. He had a little bit of grey hair and a beard. Now at first I assumed this was Gavin's dad because they looked eerily similar but then I remember that Gavin didn't live with his dad. I then assumed that he was a relative. I asked him if Gavin was home. He laughed and told me that he is Gavin. I found this a bit weird but it could have been a coincidence or Gavin was simply named after his uncle. I told him that I'm looking for a 16 year old Gavin, described him to the guy and he started looking uneasy. After some hesitation he said Gavin was not home. I asked him when he was going to get home and didn't really go into questioning who he was and he gave me a time after thinking for a few seconds. So then I came over at the given time and suddenly my 16 year old friend Gavin opened the door. I told him that his relative was there. He told me that he has no relative with the same name as him and he also told me that he was home at the time I came and met that 40 year old. We both found this extremely weird and our only explanation is time travel. I still keep in touch with Gavin who happens to be studying quantum mechanics at the time. We haven't told anyone this story. And finally number one now we have save yourself. If we accept the parallel universes are real and that people can travel between them, could you affect things in your own past that would change your world today? Again, this story might be a bit of a time travel one. See for yourself. Reddit user Goonzu said, I once had a weird dream when I was driving home and listening to some oldies. It was raining a bit and the wind was quite heavy. After a while I saw a heavily damaged car on the left side of the road. The driver must have hit a tree. I stopped my car to call the ambulance and to look for the driver. It was a woman in her mid twenties with short curly blonde hair. She was unconscious but there was some blood. She wasn't breathing so I dragged her out of the car to give her first aid. After a while I heard the sirens of the ambulance. I quickly looked in the direction of where the ambulance was coming and then back to the woman. She suddenly had her eyes wide open and a look of total terror in her face. The dream then ended there. Some weeks ago we celebrated my 25th birthday. I got some awesome presents but one was very special. My uncle made a photo collage of my family. He found them in an old box as he mentioned. I already had some shots so I decided to put it in the corner of my room with the other presents. When I was about to leave the room the collage fell over so I turned back to arrange it properly. While doing it I glanced over the photos. I've never seen old pictures of my parents before so I was quite curious after all. There was a wedding photo of my parents. I recognized my dad. He looked really sharp in his suit. Next to him was a lady that was gorgeous and pregnant. It looked like she had some wounds or scars on her arm and her neck. Then it all kicked in. She was the woman I dragged out of the car to give first aid to. My whole body trembled. I immediately ran to my dad to ask what happened back then. He told me that she had a car accident 25 years ago. When the ambulance and police arrived she laid on the street and a man was running away from her body. The doctor told my dad that if my mother didn't get first aid when she did in that situation she may have lost her unborn child because of lack of oxygen. So essentially he saved himself. Starting off this countdown we have the wrong turn. So this is a real story reported by four university students. Their names were never disclosed to protect their identity. But apparently in May of 1972 they were on their way back from a Utah rodeo and headed to their dorm. On their way back they decided to take a shortcut. 
that that was their first mistake. While traveling along this unknown road, the path suddenly turned into gravel, and then all of a sudden they hit a dead end. So they had to travel all the way back down the road that they just came. However, while doing so, they noticed that the path had changed. It didn't look like the same original path that they originally took. All of a sudden, they saw something glowing in the distance. They drove towards it and found themselves at a weird building with a neon sign. The neon sign was in a language that none of them recognized. When they pulled towards the building for help, these weird tall men came out towards them. They seemed confused and angry. Juan got close to the car and one of the girls screamed. Tall man didn't appear to be human, so they sped out of there. While driving away, they saw weird egg-shaped vehicles following them. They sped until the vehicles stopped following them. Finally, they somehow reached the road that they were originally on. To this day, they believe that they somehow traveled to another universe through that road. Isn't that creepy? Hit that thumbs up button if you agree. In our ninth spot, we have the lift ride and the disappearing store. Just recently, Reddit user NoBookkeeper3991 decided to take a lift to go to the dollar store. It wasn't too far from his place and it wasn't complicated to get to. A couple minutes go by and he should have reached the store by now, but they couldn't find it. The store just randomly wasn't there anymore. In fact, the whole street looked different. Both the dude and the lift driver started to panic. Everything changed in front of them in a flash. It was super weird. So yeah, the guy didn't end up going to the dollar store that day. Apparently, they rode into a parallel universe or something. And of course, days later, the missing dollar store magically reappeared again. Moving on at number eight, we have the disappearing professor. A well-known faculty member at the University of the Andes disappeared on campus without a trace. According to multiple witnesses, they saw the professor leave one of the university's buildings cross the parking lot and get into his car. Many people saw this happen. In fact, people were calling at him and waving to him as he got into his car, but his car sat there unmoving for a while. A couple of students actually approached the car to see what was going on and found the car empty. The professor was nowhere to be found. To this day, the professor has never returned. It's assumed that when he got into his car, he was transported to a different universe. Moving on at number seven, we have the Green Children of Woolpit. Back in the 13th century, two weird children randomly appeared in the village of Woolpit in England. The two were brother and sister and had weird greenish colored skin. To make things weirder, they spoke a language no one heard of, and they were dressed in weird clothing. They also didn't want to eat anything except raw beans. Eventually, they were taken in, but sadly, the boy became sick and passed away. The girl, on the other hand, started to like normal food and started to lose the green color in her skin. After learning to speak English, she said that her and her brother were from a place where people had green skin and the sun didn't shine bright. They were herding their dad's cattle when all of a sudden they heard a loud noise. Bam! They were in a new place. Now the girl ended up growing up and marrying a man and starting a whole new life there but it seems like the two traveled there from another dimension. Coming in at number six, we have the campsite. A couple of years ago, a woman and her friends were out camping when they heard music coming from the forest. They followed the sound thinking that they were alone and came across a small stone cabin. The weirdest part? When they approached the cabin, they saw people dressed in 17th century fashion. One of the friends was fascinated and went over to the cabin to try and go inside. As she was about to enter, one of her friends pulled her away. As that happened, half of her body became paralyzed, the half that entered the cabin. It's believed that she partially entered another dimension and that threw off her nervous system, which resulted in half of her body becoming paralyzed. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the deaths. This story is pretty intense, so buckle your seatbelts. But basically, one night this woman had a dream about someone she knew dying. Three days later, that dream came true and the person passed away. This has happened to her a number of times. She falls asleep, has a dream that someone dies, and in exactly three days, that dream comes true and that person passes away. I mean, that sounds like a horror movie plot, like if you agree. Anyways, this has happened to two of her colleagues, three of her grandparents, her great grandfather, her friend's grandfather, two school teachers, three of her friends, and a random lady she met for five minutes one day at work. So 
maybe don't become friends with her because then she'll have a dream about you and then you'll die. I'm just kidding. But some people believe that she's actually hopping from different universes. In one universe, the person has already passed away. When she jumps back to her current universe, the person isn't dead yet. And that's what triggers these dreams. They're just memories from other universes that she has traveled to. In our fourth spot, we have the different family home. Back in the day, a woman named Carol Chase McKelleny decided to visit her old family town and area. But when she was driving down her old street, she couldn't find the old house that she grew up in. In fact, all the houses on the street look completely different. She then decided to drive to the street where her grandmother used to live on. But when she got there, she found that the street was completely different as well. She then was driving through the town noticing that almost everything was changed. Like the cemetery where her parents were buried wasn't there anymore. Or a strip of restaurants and hotels was now just a graffiti covered area. She started feeling very uncomfortable and drove off. A few years later, Carol's father died and they went back to the cemetery to bury him with his parents. Surprisingly, the cemetery magically reappeared and everything about the town was back to normal. So she believes that during her other trip, she managed to visit her old town from a different dimension. In our third spot, we have the birth certificate. Just recently, Reddit user Professional Echo 348 went to get a new birth certificate. They were at town hall when they saw that their mother's middle name was not right. It was written as Victoria, but her real middle name was Virginia. So she asked the clerk what was up with it. Even her last birth certificate had her mom's middle name as Virginia. Sadly, her mom passed away 17 years ago, so she couldn't just phone up her mom and ask her what was up. Plus, she even named her daughter's middle name after her mom's middle name. So she decided to dig into this some more. She was going through old files when she saw that her mother was once married to a man named Pierce which again was wrong. His name was actually Pierre, not Pierce. So sometime in her life, she switched universes. One where her mother's middle name was Victoria and her stepfather's name was Pierce. Coming in at number two, we have the different girlfriend. One day, a guy woke up only to find that he had been sleeping next to some random girl. He freaked out and the girl, whose name was Laura, was all like, WTF, we've been dating for a couple of years now. How don't you remember? Stop fooling around, this isn't funny. Sure enough, his apartment was filled with framed photos of them together. What's weird is that that wasn't his girlfriend. He was dating a girl named Maria, not Laura. So apparently he went to bed with Maria and woke up beside a new girlfriend, Laura. So somehow he managed to switch universes in his sleep. That is insane. And does that count as cheating? Let me know in the comments below. <laughs> and in our number one spot, we have Lorena Garcia. Lorena Garcia lived a pretty mundane life until one day everything changed forever. Her life literally got flipped upside down. So she woke up one day and noticed her bed sheets were different than normal. She kind of just ignored it and went on with her day. But as she made her way to work, she noticed little things were off. Again, she ignored it as she arrived at work. But when she got to her department, she realized it wasn't her department. She thought that she was on the wrong floor, but she wasn't. She had worked there for the last 20 years. But today, she worked in a different department. She even looked herself up on her works database. She worked at the same company, but it said she worked at a different department. Then things continued to get weird. Her former boyfriend disappeared without a trace. There was no sign of him anywhere. There was not even a sign that the two had even dated. In fact, she hired someone to see what happened to him. Turns out he never existed, at least not in this universe. Her current boyfriend was someone completely different. So somehow when Lorena went to bed, she managed to travel to another universe. Isn't that crazy? Like imagine waking up and having a completely new job and partner. I would freak out and probably go insane. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the story of Carol Chase McKelleny. One day in 2006, Carol was driving through San Bernardino, California on her way to Paris, California, where she was going to stay for a few days. On her travels, she saw a sign for Riverside, which was nearby, and she decided that since her family had roots there, maybe it was time to stop in for a visit. As she went into Riverside, she realized that everything looked different from how she remembered it and was unable to find her old house that she grew up in. She tried to go to the street that her grandmother used to live on, 
but that one was different too. And when she tried to visit her grandparents' graves at the cemetery, the whole place didn't even exist. Even the people who were living in the town gave Carol a bad feeling, and she didn't even want to get out of her car. She decided she would just be better off continuing on her trip and left Riverside. Carol didn't end up returning to Riverside until a few years later, after her dad had passed and she was attending the funeral. To Carol's surprise, when she went to Riverside this time, everything was as she remembered it from her childhood. Carol believes that day that she ended up in some sort of parallel universe form of Riverside, and she even said that she felt like if she left her car that day, she was going to get stuck there. In our number 9 spot, we have this story from Peru. The Marcoasi forest in Peru has been called a doorway to another dimension for centuries because of all the stone figures that resemble human faces and religious figures, and because of the amount of people who go missing and never get found. There was a group of friends who decided to enter the forest despite all of these stories, and they ended up stumbling upon a cabin that appeared to have some sort of party going on inside. As the group went up to the cabin, they saw people inside, but all of the people were in 17th century garb, and nothing that was modern or similar to what the group of friends was wearing. One of the friends began to try and enter the cabin, and was halfway in the door when the friends quickly pulled her back. After being pulled out, it was discovered that the half of her body that had entered the cabin was now paralyzed. If her body really did become paralyzed because it had entered another dimension, that would definitely explain all of those strange stone statues. In our number 8 spot, we have the old story of the green children of Woolpit. In the 12th century, it is said that two children were discovered just outside of Woolpit, Great Britain, but what was so weird about them is that they had green skin. When the children were brought back into the city and given food and water, they refused to eat anything other than raw beans. Eventually, their green skin began to fade and turned into a more normal human color. One of the children passed away, but the girl continued to grow and eventually learned English. When she was finally able to communicate with those around her, she told the story of how her and her brother had come from a place that was in constant darkness called St. Martin's Land. Everyone from her town lived underground, and everyone had the same green skin. The girl and her brother were wandering around one day when they came across a cave, and they decided to enter. They kept walking and eventually came to Woolpit, and when they turned around, the cave they had been in disappeared. Did this cave act as a portal to an alternate reality for these kids? If so, I don't ever want to end up where they come from because it does not sound nice. Guys, before I continue on in this list, make sure you hit that like button because it really helps us out. In our number 7 spot today, we have the story of James Richards. In 2009, James was walking his dog when he tripped and knocked his head, rendering him unconscious. When he woke up, he found himself beside some sort of machine he didn't recognize, and there was another man named Jonas who said he had just found James body while he was on a work trip for the interdimensional travel company that he worked for. What? The two ended up striking up some sort of conversation, I guess like you would when someone just casually tells you that they travel through dimensions for work. They started chatting about what pop culture was like in each of their dimensions, and they came to discover that, of course, the Beatles existed in both of their dimensions. Jonas ended up explaining that in his dimension, the Beatles were all still alive, and they had never actually broken up. Jonas gave James a cassette tape of the Beatles music from his dimension that certainly does not exist in ours. When James returned to our universe, he ended up uploading the tape to a website called The Beatles Never BrokeUp.com. In our number six spot, we have a story from Reddit that was posted by the user Too Hum Folk. One day, the writer was driving home from school and began trying to call their boyfriend using the hands-free feature. The phone didn't end up ringing even after five separate attempts, so they turned the phone off and then on again and tried one more time. This time, the boyfriend answered, but it didn't really sound like the person they knew and loved, and they also sounded like they were pretty freaked out. He said, Liz, is this you? 
Liz kept saying hello, but wasn't getting an answer, and panicked and hung up the phone. Liz tried calling again twice, but there was no ring again. Luckily, on the third try, another voice picked up the phone and asked, is this better? Liz then asked who this was, and the voice responded with something unintelligible, and then they hung up. Liz continued to call the boyfriend until he picked up the phone. Sounding significantly more like himself and not panicked at all, Liz asked who was picking up the phone earlier, and the boyfriend explained that no one had picked up the phone because he had never received any other calls. When Liz got home and checked the boyfriend's call log, they realized that only one call had gone through to his phone. Liz made sure that they were dialing the right number when they were calling, and it was the correct number every single time. Who had been answering the boyfriend's phone? At our number five spot and halfway mark, we have another Reddit post from Tiger King Quinton. The user explains that this story takes place when they were eight years old in Florida with their family and their friend's family for a two week vacation. The friend really wanted to go to Wet n Wild and begged for his parents to take them there, so they ended up going one day during the trip. The boy and his dad ended up going into the wave pool that day and were mainly staying in the shallow area. After a while, a larger wave comes their way and it takes the boy underneath the water. He realizes he can't feel the bottom anymore and begins to panic trying to break the surface of the water. When he reaches the top and gets his head out of the water, he realizes that he is no longer at wet and wild, but is in the middle of an ocean a couple hundred meters from an island. He doesn't know where or what this island is, but after a few seconds he begins to feel lightheaded and sinks back into the water. Luckily he then feels some hands under his arms and he he realizes his dad is lifting him out of the water back at wet and wild, asking him if he's alright. Maybe this wave pool really did take this kid to an alternate dimension. In our number 4 spot we have a story coming from Tokyo in 1954. At the Haneda airport, a plane from Europe landed and dropped off its passengers. As the passengers made their way through customs, one man told the officials that he was just on a normal business trip that he made regularly. He spoke French as his first language, but could also speak Japanese and a few other languages. Officials then asked him where he was from, and his response is where things take a turn. He said he was from a place called Torrid, which was on the border between France and Spain. When officials told him that the place didn't exist, he gave them a passport that had been issued by this country that isn't real. This passport had also been stamped, validating all of the previous trips he had said he went on, including his previous trips to Japan. Officials called the company that he said he was meeting with, and the company said that they had never heard of him or his company before. They then called the hotel he said he had a reservation at, and the bank that was listed on his checkbook. The hotel said that there was no reservation for him, and the bank just didn't exist at all. Officials thought that maybe he was confused, so they showed him a map and pointed to the country of Andorra, asking him if this is what he meant. The man began to get upset, saying that Andorra didn't exist and that it had misplaced Torrid where he claimed to be from. Customs decided to detain the man and put him in a hotel room for the night while they decided what to do next. The next day when they went to collect the man, he had totally disappeared with all of his personal identification and documents. Police searched for this missing man, but he was never found. Maybe this man somehow accidentally found himself in a parallel universe separate from his own, and I just hope he was able Able to make it back to wherever he was from and return to his normal life. In our number three spot, we have the story of a man named Jafar Vorin. Jafar was a strange man who just appeared in a village one day before he was picked up by authorities. The language he spoke was closest to German, but even then it wasn't quite the same. Jafar said he was from a place called Sakria and that he was searching for his brother who had been lost in a shipwreck. He couldn't point out where he was from, but was able to tell authorities some geographical information about where he had come from. He explained that his home had five separate compartments or continents called Sakria, Aflar, Aslar, and Uplar. He couldn't show anyone how he had arrived at the village, and he had no idea how to get home, so he just ended up living out the rest of his life in Berlin. It's crazy to think that maybe he was a man from another dimension, and he ended up just getting stuck here. I feel bad for him, and I wish we could have helped him return home. In our number two spot, we have the story of Pedro Ramirez. 
Pedro was driving from a place called Seville to his home in Alcala de Guadera on a November night in 1986. As he went around a curve in the road, he suddenly found himself on a six lane highway and as he continued to drive straight, he saw tall buildings, unidentified structures and grass that was two feet tall growing alongside the road. These were all things that were out of the ordinary for that area. He continued driving and suddenly Pedro heard a voice that told him he had been transferred to another country in a different hemisphere. Pedro didn't know what to do so he kept driving for another hour before stopping on the side of the road to take a look around. After a short break he began driving again only to come across a sign with three arrows pointing in different directions. One was labeled Malaga, the other was Sevilla and the last was Alcabala. Pedro decided to take the Sevilla route and after driving down it for a while, he stopped again. When he pulled over and got out of the car, he stood there for a second. And then when he looked back to his left, he saw he was standing right outside of his home. He tried to go back to where he had been before, but couldn't find anything that he had seen before, including the sign with the three arrows. Who knows where Pedro was for that while, but I'm very glad that he ended up making it home safely. In our number one spot today, we have the story of Lorena Garcia. One morning in 2008, Lorena woke up in a life that was similar to the one she was living when she went to sleep, but certainly not the same. At first, it was just small things like her bed sheets and her pajamas, but when she got to work, things began to escalate. Lorena realized that her office wasn't her office and that she worked in the same building, but in a completely different department. She had never even met her boss before, so she knew that this couldn't have been a moment where she just got lost or confused. When she returned home after work that day, she was met by her ex-boyfriend, only to find out that he was apparently her current boyfriend. She tried to find the person that she had been dating for months but he didn't seem to exist in this new life and world that she found herself in. Lorena began to seek psychiatric help because she was fearing that she was having some sort of nervous breakdown but all tests reveal that she seemed to be of sound body and mind. The strange occurrences continued when Lorena asked her family how her sister was doing. Lorena knew that her sister had recently had shoulder surgery and wanted to check in, but when she asked her family, they were baffled by her claims and insisted that there was no surgery that had taken place on anyone in the family. Lorena couldn't find any answers to her situation and was having no luck with a medical explanation either. She is convinced that she went to sleep one night and woke up in a parallel universe that was altered slightly by small decisions that she had made. Honestly, after all of these stories, I kind of believe Lorena too. 